Okay, so uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the subclades of R1A and R1B. Uh, but first, we're going to talk a little bit about the centum and satum divide. So the R1A peoples uh, have something called satumization, which is a change in the language. Uh, and the satum languages seem to have been in much closer contact than the centum language. Uh, centum languages are a mostly Western branch of uh, Indo-European, but it's been shown that Tocharian was part of the centum languages as well. So obviously they uh, split off uh, from from a, uh, an early centum group. Uh, Armenian, as I uh, commented, is discussed whether it's actually satum. Uh, you can see on this map it's displayed as Sartum, and Albanian as well, because Albanian and Armenian seem to be somewhat Sartumized, but they're not uh, fully Sartumized. Uh, so here you can see that uh, the Srebna and Sintashta uh, civilizations were proposed to be the point where Sartumization began. So Sintashta were steppe herders, uh, an early Indo-European offshoot. And as I was uh, also, as I also briefly mentioned, uh, if you discount Armenians, then the R1B and R1B influenced peoples uh, are Centum belong to the Centum group, and the R1A um, belong to the Sartamized group. So the last image was from uh, Wikimedia Commons, and I will credit the user uh, in. The about section as I usually do. Uh, all of the maps from here on in are from the website that I recommended to you previously that I think you should all go go and look at in order to study uh, European genetics and uh, the genetics of ancient civilizations. It's It's got a lot of very good info. Uh, this map is R1A which is where we'll begin then we'll move on to R1B and then I'll go through uh, the development of the expansion of the Indo-Europeans into Europe uh, over various eras as they as they move further west. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. Um, you can see here this is uh, the Kurgan uh, hypothesis. So it's one of the areas I marked as the potential uh, origin of R1A. They're above the Pontic Sea. Uh, so it's the Dnipro Donetsk uh, culture and the Yamna culture uh, and uh, you can see that there's a branch in the Abashevo Sintashta expansion that moves east carrying uh, Z93 and Z94 and then Z94 expands further it goes even further east and it goes south into the area where the Indo-Iranians form and then uh, it become there it becomes proto-Iranian, traveling west, and and further uh, becomes associated with the Mitanni. Uh, it goes southeast from the Indo-Aryan homeland, uh, and L six five seven enters the Indus uh, river basin, and then from there. It enters uh, India proper. It goes further southeast, and yeah, that's that's the those are the eastern branches. There's the Iranians and the Indians. So then uh, you can see there's also an ex there's an expansion uh, towards the Caucasus, the Katakum culture, and the uh, Poltavka expansion, uh, and then we have the European clades. So there's various uh, Z designations. Z93 moves uh, north, Z280 moves into the Baltic region, uh, and then we have we have the two uh, Slavic clades, M458 and Z283, moving west into the Slavic territories and uh, onto the border of the, what are to become the Germanic territories. Z284 is the one that uh, is responsible for forming the the precursor of the Nordic Bronze Age, which uh, is uh, important in, in founding Germanic culture. 
and then we have also the the L664 branch, which is another uh, another one that participates in the formation of Germanic culture. Uh, the Corded Way culture is the source of this expansion into Europe, and that's a very interesting uh, culture, which we'll do some more uh, videos on at some point. It's also called the Battle Axe culture or the Boat Axe culture. This is getting a little bit uh, long for a short, so I'm going to uh, finish here and then I'll talk about R1B and show you some more maps uh, in the next part of this video. Thank you.